Hello, good morning everyone. So our uh, topic now for uh, today is on the chapter 1 on the marketing of agricultural commodity. So again, uh, before we start, uh, this is Ag Entrip 313, Introduction to Agricultural Commodity and Entrepreneurial Development. I am Roswin Asibandal, your instructor for this subject. Okay, course description. This course focuses on the foundation or operation and use of agricultural commodity markets, how markets were created, how commodities are traded from producers to final consumers, the role of transportation and storage. And it also deals with the growth and development of agribusiness in the ASEAN region, expound the rules of agribusiness sector to economic development, and supply chain analysis of selected high-value crops. Okay, this subject is uh, offered for uh, BSE second year for the second semester of this school year. Okay, again, I am Sevanda Roswin, so that's my Facebook account. And the section send out BSE 2A, 2B, 2C, and 2D. Okay, the topic outline. So, chapter, uh, there are four chapters at the end of the semester. Chapter 1 is Marketing of Agricultural Commodity. Chapter 2, Marketing Strategy of Agricultural Products. Chapter 3, Agricultural Commodities Exchange. And Chapter 4, Agribusiness Development in the Philippines. Okay. Now, we will start on our uh, topic on the Chapter 1. Okay, I'm sorry for the effect na natambuna ng inyong title. That is Marketing of Agricultural Commodity. Okay. At the end of the chapter, you will be able to explain the stages in a commodities marketing system, acquire the knowledge and skills of the grain marketing, livestock and meat marketing, poultry and egg marketing, and the fresh milk marketing, and of course, you will be able to know the local practice of agricultural commodities marketing. Okay, now what is commodity? So the term commodity is commonly used in reference to basic agricultural products that are either in their original form or have undergone only primary processing. So again, a commodity reference to basic agricultural products. Okay, basic agricultural products either in their original form or undergone only primary processing. So matawag na ito siya commodity undergan only primary processing if the ganagani give uh, example milk give process pa pa gimugindi ug sa pa dinha siya matawag na commodity only the milk is the commodity so examples of commodity cereals coffee beans sugar palm oil eggs milk fruits vegetables beef cotton and the rubber so that are the examples of commodity Okay, agricultural commodities are generic and differentiated products that, since they have no other distinguishing and marketable characteristics, they compete with one another on the basis of price. So, commodities contrast sharply with those products which have been given a trademark or branded in order to communicate their marketable differences. So, again, ha, ang commodities, generic na siya, agricultural commodities, undifferentiated product that is compete with one another on the basis of the price. Okay. Now, what are the stages in a commodity marketing system? Okay. Ano saman ang mga stage sa commodity marketing system? Okay. What is a commodity marketing system first? So, commodity marketing system encompasses all the participants in the production Processing and marketing. Again, participants, mga tao nga involved sa production, processing, and marketing of an undifferentiated or unbranded farm product such as cereals. So it includes the farm input suppliers, our farmers, storage operators, processors, wholesalers, and retailers involved in the flow of the commodity from initial inputs to the final consumer. So again, ang community marketing system involve siya sa mga participants, mga tao nga involved sa production pa lang, pag-abot sa processing and then the marketing. So muna ang community marketing system. Okay. 
Another, it also includes all the institutions and arrangements. Second one. So first, kagayin na nung includes participants. Second, it includes all the institutions and arrangements that affect and coordinate the successive stages of a community flow, such as the government, trade associations, cooperatives, financial partners, transport groups, and educational organization that is related to the community. So mga institutions, part yapon sa community marketing system. Now, the community system framework includes the major linkages that hold the system together such as transportation, contractual, coordination, vertical integration, joint ventures, tripartite marketing, and financial arrangement. Okay, mona ang community system framework. Now, there are seven, okay, seven stages of agricultural marketing. So, stage one, of course, assembly stage. So, mauna, mag-assemble ta sa atong product. Assembly stage, example, community buyers specializing, specializing in specific agricultural products, such commodities as grain, the cattle, the beef, the oil palm, the cotton, the poultry, and eggs, and the milk. So, mauna ang unders ato ang assembly stage. So, mga community buyers kay nga involved to assemble the products, agricultural products. So, after assembly stage, okay, step by step process, yun din siya, after assembly stage, transportation. Okay, na-assemble na ang products sa farm, so we transport the product. Example of this is the independent trackers, the tracking companies, railroads, airlines, and others transportation uh, facilities. Okay, so transportation stage. Sa pa'y magamit na to, to transport our agricultural products. After transporting the product from the farm, okay, stage 3 ta, storage. Okay, gina-store na to ang atong product. So, ang mga involved ana, ang green elevators, the public refrigerated warehouses, controlled atmosphere warehouses, the heated warehouses, and the freezer warehouses. So, dipindi sa imuhang produkto. Kung asa, ni mo store. Kung grains, uh, grain types ba na, i-refrigerate ba na nga product, ipainit pa ba na, or dito na sa controlled atmosphere ng mga warehouses. Nato i-butang. Okay. So, i-store nato sa ang product. After storing the product, stage 4, grading and classification. We grade the product and we classify the product. Now, what is the difference between grading and specialization? So, matakol na to for the uh, later part of our discussion. So, grade na to ang product, i-classify na to ang product. Classify, pwede o saan nga product, marketable ba ni? Not marketable. We grade that product uh, into small, medium, large, into uh, same sizes, uh, color and any others uh, any other factors no nga mag-grade and ma-classify nato ang atong product okay after grading and classification stage 5 na ta processing okay processing ta involve ana the food and fiber processing plants such as flour mills oil mills rice mills cotton mills wool mills and fruit and vegetable canning or freezing plant so after the product, okay, gikan na nato, gigrade, giklasify nato. So we process the product. Process nata sa product, no? Bisa kung sana, ah, uh, depende sa product kung asa nimo i process unsay, angay nimo i process. A, processing. After processing stage 6 nata, the packaging. Okay, packaging nato, um, involved or pwede ang atong packaging is the uh, mga tin cans na involved ang mga makers no sa atong tin cans, the cardboard boxes, film bags and bottles for food packaging or fiber products for um uh, ini packaging no on sa pay ma uh, gamit nato. Depende sa product nga mabuhatan nato uh, sa or mabutang nato no. Asa nato mabutang ang product. So unsa nga packaging atong 
magamit. So after package the product, stage 7 na ta, distribution and retailing. Okay, so sa distribution and retailing, of course, na package naman atong product, we distribute the product, gibaligyan nato atong product. Okay, involved involve ani ang mga independent wholesalers, uh, independent wholesalers marketing products for various processing plants to the retailers. So their own separate warehouse distribution um, center. So any other center nga pwede na to ma baligya ang atong produkto. So mo na ang atong stages of agricultural marketing. So again na step by step. Assembly, transport, store, grade and classify, process, package and distribute. Okay, that's the seven stages of agricultural marketing. Now, agricultural commodities marketing. Okay, what is agricultural commodities marketing? Okay. Natay mga types sa atong agricultural commodities marketing. But first, we will discuss on the grain marketing. The grain marketing, the principal participants in grain marketing systems are the producers, marketing boards, the grain elevators, brokers, millers, livestock farmers, animal feed processors, millers, other food manufacturers, and the grain exchanges and exporters. Okay, mauna ang mga participants sa atong grain marketing system. Okay. Now, this is the typical grain marketing system na akong nakita okay, from the farmers okay, sa atong product. Uh, product, pwede na to i-consume ang atong grains. Mga grains, mga cereals, mga rice, yan na, no? pwede household consumptions or pwede na to diretso baligya. Okay. Si broker or si commission agent mo po as a farmer and then si broker or commission agent okay mo baligyan na po dito sa ayatan na po niya sa millers, livestock farms, then green elevator, uh, mga animal feed processors. Then pwede po ang farmer sa inyong product ng grains, uh, diretso niya sa green marketing boards that is for food security reserve. So, si green marketing boards export the product to the consumers and pwede import as on-farm use as livestock feed then um, pack to the farmers gaya po no uh, na cycle na gaya po ng atong product okay mo ng typical uh, grain marketing system na to so weather storage okay sa grain storage na punta weather storage takes place on the farm or in silos of the farm increases in the value of products due to their time utility must be sufficient to compensate for cost at this stage or else storage will not be profitable Muna, of course we store nato ang grain uh, mga grains no mga product nato so this cost will include heating the lighting chemical treatments store management and labor the capital investment in storage and handling equipment and terrace charges and opportunity cost relating to the capital tied up in stocks. So, importante nga ma-store gapon ang mga grains product. Okay. Among the less tangible cost is the risk attached to the storage. So, nagya po yung risk no, sa atong pag-store sa atong product. So, this includes the shrinkage due to pilferage. Shrinkage na. So, maunang risk na to isa. Sa pest, sa fungal growths, um, fungal growths and loss of quality due to aging okay another risk is that the demand could fall with adverse effect on the prices so masubra na po natong storage mo effect na gapo ng presyo niya ana so this means that they no longer require all of their storage capacity the number of marketing parasitals now rent some of their storage capacity to farmers so the green traders and other participants in the green marketing system okay there are two types of storage facility that are commonly found this is namely the bulk storage facility and the bag storage facility no underneath the grains so the bulk storage facility where cereals are stored in the concrete and or the metal bins one of bulk storage gina store nila sa concrete and then the metal bins 
Then, ang bag storage facility where the crop is stored either inside a warehouse or in the open and then covered by a tarpaulin sheets. Okay. Munang sa mga bag storage facility. Nang pwede na nato magawa sa may no, pwede sa open, pwede dito sa warehouse sa load, then tambun na nato mga tarpaulin lang dayon. So, yung nga nga mga um, storage, no? ang bag storage facility. Okay. So, in comparative terms, the advantages of a bulk over a bag storage system are that it's more efficient. No? Efficient ang advantages sa bulk because it reduces congestions at the depot by not allowing for bag maize to be dumped all over the depot yard. It reduces the handling cost. It saves the foreign exchange on bags, tarpaulin, and it lowers the storage losses. Okay. So, may gapon diay ang bulk storage. Okay. But, ang iyang disadvantage gapon, the initial invest is high with a significant foreign currency equipment. It is inflexible in terms of not being easily expandable to cope with changes in intake and offtake levels. It relies heavily on an efficient transport system because a silo complex is only economically viable when throwout is at least 1.6 times its capacity and of course it needs skilled manpower to run and maintain the entire system. Okay. There are four disadvantages kaya pundi ay sa atong bulk storage, no? Taas ang high investment ni siya. Then, that easily expandable to cope up, no? Kung sa yung mga changes and other, kaya po na. Of course, scaled man power to run. Kaya kung wala yung mga trabante po nga mas maayon mo trabaho, ana, wag kaya po. So, dapat nakaka, ana. Okay. Now, how to grade the grains? So, sa grading of grains, it is important to have a grading system which accurately describes the products in a uniform and the meaningful manner. Dapat ginagrade kaya po nato ang mga grains. Okay. Grades and standards contribute to the operational and pricing efficiency by providing the buyers and sellers with the system of communicating the price and the product information. So by definition, commodities are indistinguishable from one another. However, there are differences between the grades and this has to be communicated to the market. Okay. The grading typically occurs at the assembly stage. So sa assembly stage pa lang daan, dapat ginagrade na nato ang mga grains. Or of course, it When a product moves into storage, pwede ka po nito during storage baka ha or just before it leaves storage. So, diha mahitabo ang pag-grade sa grains. So, it is a function provided by the storage firm or the commodity merchant or of the government. So, prescribed procedures for grading are set forth by the trade members of commodity markets or else are stated in the government regulations. So, grading may be undertaken by a member of the trade specializing in a particular commodity. Of course, sa member lang sa trade, pwede mag-grade ana, na mag-specialize po ana of that particular commodity. Naman nang sa pag-grade sa atong grains. Now, how do we process the grain? So, grain processing is about the most important activity from the final consumer standpoint within the marketing chain of of the crop. So grain for human consumption of course is usually milled into flour or meal. Okay. Muna siya into flour or meal ang pagprocess para magamit nato, no? The grains can also undergo secondary processing and it can be converted into more sophisticated products such as baked foods, breakfast cereals, baby foods, Cooking, cooking oils, starches, sugars, and others. Okay. So, a considerable amount of grain is also converted to animal feed. Pwede nga po nato siya makonvert into animal feed. So, due to this versatility in end use, the marketing chain for grains tends to be long and complex. Now, what are the challenges for the grain 
marketing system. Nagyan po yung mga challenges na ma-encounter no, sa green marketing system. So, the depot network and distribution of production problems arise because the crop production is rarely evenly distributed across a country. So, excess stock problems tend to develop because of the relatively high producer prices which the governments of the countries concerned establish in order to compensate the farmers whose cost for production are high. Katolo, fluctuating the green supply problem results from the crop's susceptibility to weather, which determine the level of harvest and therefore the export market supply. So muna, first challenges ang depot network of distribution sa production. Ano man, because the crop production is rarely evenly distributed across the country. So, wala, good, dili, good, fairly distribute. Then, exist tax problems. Kana mga exist tax, nga naman, uh, relatively high producer prices, gyapon na siya, which the government of the country is concerned to compensate farmers. So, ay ma store nato, daghang kayo. Ikatulo, of course, fluctuating the green supply problem. Pag supply, nga naman, tungod sa um, weather nato, weather condition nato. Sa ita kabalo, pila yung maharvest, ah uh, sige pila rek makuha karon nato no sa ato pag harvest okay so moto ang unders atong green marketing system the second one is the livestock and meat marketing okay so sa livestock and meat marketing it is simpler because some of the production and marketing functions are combined and carried out by the fewer enterprises and some are not carried out at all. Okay. For instance, there is no formal animal feed sector at the production end and the slaughtering, cutting, and the boning is often done by the consumer. Manang ginaingon, walay formal nga animal feed sector at the production pa lang. And then, the slaughtering, ang pag-ihaw, pag-cut, pag-debone, ginabuhat sa consumer. In put another way, the production and marketing system is shorter and simpler because it offers the fewer services to both producers and consumers. Pagbaligya, of course, pagbaligya sa karne, si consumer na ang magkontantad, magkonsapan at liha, siya na tanan. Nagbaligya na ka. So, ano eh, simple, simple naging kayo ang button pa. Okay. So, muna ang uh, typical gyapon na uh, atong chart. So, from the farmers, na si livestock brokers involved, si village based livestock trader, then traveling livestock trader, okay na, ng local livestock trader into the marketplace, then local consumption, and of course, final is the consumer. So, muna ang atong sa livestock and meat marketing. So, to assemble the livestock and meat, it is depend upon the complexity of the particular marketing system cattle are assembled to serve one of the following purposes. For slaughter, for fattening, or for breeding herds. Okay. And these, there are various types of livestock assemblers and assembling institu institutions. So, one is the institutions, the farmers, rural traders, local cooperatives, order buyers, commissioning agent, then auctions, terminal public markets, and the meat packers. Okay. The farmers, the level of farmer-to-farmer -farmer trade can be substantial, where there is a degree of specialization within the livestock and meat marketing system. So for example, when some farmer concentrate on the breeding or fattening, the amount of farmer-to-farmer -farmer trade can be very high. Asia. Sa rural traders, usually there are, these are independent entrepreneurs as described in the reference to, to against Indonesia Tarang Small Remain Marketing System, uh, this may be established the business premises or simply travel around a defined geographical territory, buying from farmers and selling onto fatteners, auctions, or buyers, abat, abattoir, or terminal markets. Okay. Sa local cooperative staff, the functions largely as shipping agencies, collecting small lots, 
from producers and shipping them forward in economic size uh, batches to terminal markets. Okay. So some have diversified and offer a broader range of services and often merchandise their livestock direct to the packers and the other buyers. Among order buyers, purchase the fatting stock on behalf of okay, sa mga processors from farmers in return for a fee. Order buyers lang. Okay. Si commissioning agent it do not take legal title to the livestock but obtain a commission when they make a sale. Okay, mauna nga itong mga commission agent. Wala sila title sa, wala sila legal title to livestock, but they have the commission to sale. Now, sa atong auctions, the public auction offer livestock or uh, did wait meat for sale to the highest bidder. So, gina-auction gina nila, gina-bid. So, auctions are almost exclusively attended by the trade and not the general public. So, of course, in some countries, there may be various types of auctions operating. So, some auctions are breeders and those wishing to procure animals for fattening. Other auctions are attended by the retail butchers, the meat packers, and the traders and others. Okay, manang sa auctions. Terminal public markets. Okay, manang sa mga terminal public markets na to, the large central markets which both the trade and the public may patronize. So the, the municipal authority or the private organizations providing the facilities of the market does not engage in trade but the profits from charging fees for the use of these facilities. So farmers and others may trade on their own account in these markets or may appoint commissioning agents. So meat packers na to, some packing plants are located near terminal, the Trigapon or auction markets and have their own cattle buyers. So cattle na example ani. So, these have combined the assembly and the processing functions. Okay. In grading our livestock and carcass, there are three dimensions. The first relates to the differing values attached to cuts of meat. So, pag -cut. The second, the quality of those cuts. But, na quality. And the third dimension is that of the carcass yield. No. So the first of these classes of criteria is in some measure objective. Depending upon the country and the culture, different parts of the animal are more fevered than others or are in shorter supply and therefore attract the higher prices. So the measures of meat quality and even the yield are rather more subjective. Siya. Now, ang measure yield na sa meat quality and the yield is subjective. Okay. Itong, the first criteria, in sa measure na to, objective to siya. Okay. So, muna ang sa grading, and li grading of livestock and or carcass. Now, on livestock and meat processing po na to, in contrast with all other sectors of the food industry, the meat packing industry is a process of disassembling. Whilst other food manufacturers combine the simple raw materials into a complex composite product, meat packers break down a complex raw product livestock into its constituent parts. So this reverse manufacturing process nevertheless adds the form utility to livestock product. So from raw to complex, okay, then complex to raw. So murag gina form na yung mga form utility nga na involved gina process kinya gina relay ginya so the animal carcass is in reality a bundle of products each with different markets demands and values so the average somewhere between 55 to 62 percent of a beef, beef animal's live weight is recovered as the meat products so for pigs carcass the figures are 70 to 75 percent and the carcass yield other byproducts, of course, such as hides, the belts, the lard, and the offal. In consumption of our livestock and meat, of, co of course, meats are a versatile food representing a variety of the consumer's attributes. Meat can be purchased that is ready to eat, ready to cook, or in form requiring substantial preparation. So most meat is sold fresh. In LDCs, 
but increasingly such processed items as canned meats are becoming available and these are giving the consumer additional choice. So food processors can combine the meats with other foods to add the further to consumer choice. So how that is how we consume our livestock and meat. Okay, that's the uh, second one. No? Manatas, uh, manatas sa grain marketing system, then the livestock and meat S marketing system. Now, we move on on the third marketing, the poultry and eggs marketing. So, of course, tagang hiyapon makarilit, kaya dagan nang poultry dia o uh, nagbaligya sa mga itlog. Okay, so poultry farmers have three distinct types of birds from which to select their flocks. So, marketing pa lang daan, kung ikaw farmers, poultry farmers, mili na ka, kining tulo ka klase sa mga bird para mas select nimo. First, ang mga hybrid nga, broilers. These are the chickens which are first crosses and multiple crosses. These gain weight more quickly and lay more eggs than the pure breeds. Okay. Dali ra mo dako ang timbang ana nga uh, manok. Of course, dali ra pod mangitlog. Sumo nang ginapili sa to mga farmers. Ikaduha ang mga dual purpose birds. So this type of bird has the advantage of rarely exhibiting cannibalism, no katong cannibalism and is hardly against diseases. So magya po ng ilang pilion. Third, the lightweight birds. And these are bred breed for egg production, mga lightweight nga birds. Okay. So, sa egg production, kung kanang gusto ka, egg production, para kabaligya ka itlog, mo ng mga lightweight nga mga bird. So, manang tulo, no? Ka types of bird na ginaselect sa mga poultry farmers. So, in assembling the poultry and eggs, it is the case in most developing countries that the poultry and egg sector is highly fragmented. So, production is, for the most part, carried out by a large number of farmers, each with a very small flock. So a, mi a minority of farmers have sizable flocks and much of the production is sold on markets in the immediate vicinity of the farm. Okay. Now, in grading the egg, the principal external features of an egg which collectively determine its quality are the shell texture the color, the shape, and condition. So in some countries, standards have been established for each of these external physical features for an egg. So the internal condition of the egg is also of interest when assigning a grade to eggs. Okay. This include the position of the yolk within the shell and its color. So the extent of blood spots, if any, and the translucence and firmness of the albumin, katong white na sa atong egg. Okay. Mga na, ang pag-grade sa atong egg. Sa first grading pa lang, the shell must be clean, unbroken, and practically normal in shape and texture. So the air cell must not exceed the 9.5 mm in depth and may move freely but not be broken or bubbly. Di siya mapag o mapabli ba siya? Itong naimurag ko, naikon ko sa itlog. Then the yolk may appear off-center but only slightly enlarged and may show only slight embryonic development. So no foreign objects may be present. Mga pa lang sa first reading sa itlog. Second grade, the shell must be unbroken but may be somewhat abnormal in shape and texture. Only slight stains and marks are permitted. So the yolk may appear dark and enlarged and may show the embryonic development but not at the blood vessel stage or beyond. So the blood spots less than 6 mm are permitted. Tapos na siya ang third grade pod, other edible eggs that is does not rotten, sour, moldy or musty, not incubated to the blood vessel stage, not containing insects, worms or blood spots 6 mm in diameter or diffused. Blood. Okay, the weight of a poultry carcass is a uh, so mao na ang egg grading nato. Now proceed sa poultry grading. Layang egg, layo ang sa poultry. 
So sa poultry, the weight of a poultry carcass is a primary attribute when grading the bird. Timbang. The weight of the carcass will vary by the breed, sex, and age. And it will also vary in accordance with the feeding regime of the bird. So the eating quality of the poultry meat is of particular concern to consumers. Ang meat tenderness, juiciness, and flavor are the key criteria of quality in which the consumers have an interest. So of course, mamili ka kadong karne nga humok, uh, may pagka-juicy and lami. Okay? Humok, juicy, lami. Mugi na ang mga kriteria nga ginapangita sa consumer. Okay? Ito po na ginapangita ninyo. Skin color is another determinant of quality but the preference for white or yellow carcasses varies around the world. Okay. In the industrialized countries, the detailed standards and grades for dressed birds, example, yung feeders and blood remove, have been established. Kaya po na siya. So, these grading systems take account of conformation of the carcass, the presence of pin feeders, skin conditions, integrity of bones, and the carcass color or the discoloration. However, in most developing countries, grading is more informal, less systematic, and more subjective. So possibly the two must, most important quality criteria in the tropics are the age and the sex. So younger birds, although lighter, that generally enjoy a price premium, premium over the or older poultry. Okay, mo nang sa poultry grading na to. Now, how do we consume our poultry and egg? In the industrialized world, poultry and to a slightly lesser extent eggs are less of a commodity than they were at one time. Originally, this product exhibited a high degree of homogeneity, but the producers have since differentiated both of them. By manipulating the feed given to poultry, producers have been able to alter the taste characteristics and the appearance of the birds. So poultry has also been differentiated by the way they are preserved, by offering different cuts of the birds, by pre-cooking, coating in bread, and in a variety of herbs. Okay. With product differentiation, the producers and food manufacturers have taken the opportunity to brand their poultry and the poultry products. The differentiation of eggs has chiefly centered on the boxing the eggs and branding them. Some producers, and more particularly the food companies, Operating in developing countries have followed the suit and have differentiated their poultry products. So eggs, however, continue to be marketed as an undifferentiated commodity. Okay. So mato ang sa poultry and egg. Now, how do we market the fresh milk? So na mga dairy products tree. Marketing of fresh milk na puta. So while the milk can be converted to a range of dairy products such as cheese, butter, yogurt, the dried powders, and others, these are not commodities. So kana mga cheese, mga butter, mga yogurt, dried powders, mga dairy, all of the dairy products are not considered as commodity. So sa ginayon nako ang commodity is maybe in the original form or involved only or undergone only primary processing. So kung ang milk gina init lang nato may matawag ya pun siya nga commodity. Ginapainit lang. But kung gina process na into cheese, daghan na kayo ginaagihan niya na butter and others, dili na siya matawag na commodities. Only the milk is the commodity. Okay. So it is generally the case that the pressing of milk into these products involve a mixture of the product differentiation. So that is the methods, the techniques, and technologies used in manufacturing the dairy produce. It is tend to impart the unique characteristic to the finished product. So for this reason, we only discuss the milk, not the dairy products. Okay. Milk is an extremely important human food. 
Not only it is a relatively cheap source of protein, and it is also rich in minerals such as calcium and vitamins A, D, and the B2. So the quality of milk is usually judged according to its the butter fat content. In addition, the buyers are also concerned that it should be free from diseases like tuberculosis. So in all parts of the world, the milk production is seasonal, but the peaks and troughs are higher in the tropics. Okay. Assembly of fresh milk. In the case of fresh milk, the assembly level resembles that of poultry. The milk goes directly from dairy farms to the processing plant. So the bulk tanker trucks visit farms on a regular schedule and collect the milk. It is then moved to a processing plant. Then, the hauling will be done either by the dairy company's own vehicles or by the independent truckers under contract to the processors or to the dairy farmer. Now, in transportation of fresh milk, while the tankers which carry the chilled milk from the farm to the factory are becoming ever larger, the major remain constant remains of the inadequate road infrastructure. So during the wet season, many roads become impassable and the milk simply is not collected. Whereas the trucks used to transport other agricultural commodities can be used to move a variety of different types of product. The milk tankers cannot. Okay. This affects the economics of milk transportation. So milk tankers, by contrast, travel empty in one direction and full on the return journey. So manang pagtransport sa atong fresh milk. Okay, sub time. Now on the grading of fresh milk. So the fluid milk is usually separated into at least two grades. So for the purposes of this discussion, this, was, this will be referred as grades A and B. Okay. So, sa grade A na to, it would be passed as fit for human consumption. Muna, pag grade sa itong fish milk, grade A, fit for human consumption. Grade B would be passed only for use in processed dairy products. So, grade B milk is processed at much higher temperatures than the fluid milk passes through when being pasteurized and this is why it can be approved for human consumptions. So, albeit if only in the form of the processed dairy products. So, grade in ato, feed for human consumption. Grade B nato, that is feed, that is only used for processed dairy products. So, na magamit nato, pay mo cheese, si mo butter, si mo yogurt. Okay, mo na ang pag grade sa atong fresh milk. So, in general, the fluid milk attracts higher prices than milk destined for use in processed products. So, in part, this is explained by the need to compensate the market participants for the additional cost and marketing a highly perishable product and moving and storing a very bulky commodity. So the second explanatory factor is that the fact that fluid milk has a lower elasticity of demand than though the process product. Uh, these are the raw milk obtained from farmers no, sa paggrade grade nato sa atong fresh milk. So of course, na atay mga test nga magian na atay gitawag nga organoleptic test. Okay, organoleptic test, this simply means that uh, the sense of smell is used to detect the sour odors and perhaps tasted too. So the visual inspection reveals the presence of the foreign matter. So dia ang organoleptic test. Naputay lactometer reading. So this test is conducted to detect any adulteration of the milk like the adding or skimming of the fat. So muna sa lactometer reading test. Naikitawag na ito nga resazurin test. The bacterial count of the milk is measured giving an indication of the standards of the hygiene at the farm. Muna sa resazurin test. Ang butter fat of course, ang fat content niya, Ana, is the principal criteria used in deciding the level of payment to individual farmers. So, raw milk is expected to have a fat content of at least 
3.25. Di mana? 3.25 lang ang butter fat content. So sa processed milk at the factory ya po, ito raw milk to the farmers. Ang processed milk at the factory na ito, ang level of acidity niya, pag grade niya dapat not more than 0.15%. Ang butter fat content dapat not less than 2.25%. Sa iyang solids other than the fat, uh, dapat po not less than 8.5%. Ang total plate count, not more than 100,000 grams. And the presence of coliforms, not more than 10 per grams. And the efficiency of pasteurization is the phosphatase test. Phosphatase test. Okay, muna ang pag-grade sa factory. Okay, the fresh milk consumptions in rural areas, many households either own a cow to provide milk for their own, households and perhaps to make some informal sales to neighbors or they will purchase milk from a local farmer and if there are localized calling facilities and health and hygiene laws permit and rated milk will be made available in local stores okay so mauna ang sa fresh milk consumption nato again the agricultural marketing commodities upat katay si green marketing, poultry and uh, egg, the livestock and meat, and then the fresh milk marketing. So, mo ng four types of the agricultural uh, marketing, no? Commodity marketing. So, that's a reference in the L internet and the Hadera Alimayo, April 2020, the Agricultural and Community Marketing Module by Mekel University. And, of course, that's the end of our chapter 1. And see you on our uh, chapter 2 um, topics. No, Ang chapter 2 topic na to. Okay? And of course, hope you will answer laboratory exercise number 1. The 5 questions and the format was given, uploaded in the u step. Okay? And that's all for today's uh, topic for the chapter 1. Thank you and see you for the next video.